And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Okay, today we're talking about Draco. Draco! Uh, in our Dragon Week, I guess this is here at the Dice Tower. Uh, talking about games with dragons. This is one where one player is a dragon and the other person are three dwarves and they fight to the death. Or they fight, well, for about 30 minutes they fight. It's a simple, light, tactical card game. Let's take a look at it. And we'll be back. In this game, there's a wounded dragon in the middle of this canyon, and there's three dwarfs that are coming after him. Now, what's interesting is that there's the three dwarfs are not all the same. The one guy has a crossbow on his figure, and that guy actually has a crossbow. But they are uh, trying to kill this dragon before the dragon can escape, and the dragon's trying to uh, escape or kill the dwarves. Basically, he will escape by making everyone go through the decks and still being alive, at which point he flies away. Now, each player has a card where they're going to take wounds as the game progresses. You can see here the dwarf card, the three different dwarfs. It shows each one. Each one is a symbol, and when that dwarf takes enough wounds to fully kill it, then that dwarf is removed from the game. The dragon is a little bit different. There's only one of him, and so the first four wounds that the dragon takes are up here, but after that, the dwarf player decides where he wants to wound him, and by filling up one of these spots with wounds, he can stop the dragon from flying, he can stop the dragon from moving, he can stop the dragon from using his flame breath, and he can decide which of those he wants to do. The way this game is played is with these decks of cards. A player is going to have four cards from a deck in their hand. They can never have more than six cards, and on your turn, you do two actions. Well, the dragon goes first and has one action, but after that, it's two actions, two actions, two actions. And your actions are thus. You can draw two more cards for an action, or you can play a card as an action. You can draw two and play one, or you can play two, or you can draw four. The cards do different things. For example, this card here is an attack card. You can see there with the axe for one or two dwarves. And so if two dwarves were next to the dragon, they would each hit him for one damage. Now the dragon, if the dragon has a defensive card, he can play that card. The defensive cards are shields. He can play that card to block the hit. If he doesn't, he'll take the damage. The dragon also has cards that will do damage. For example, here he can either, with this card, either attack for one, that's what the teeth mean, or he can move two spaces on the board. If the dragon plays a card with a wing, he can fly anywhere on the board. This card lets him move one or uh, use it, block someone else's hit. And some of them are a fireball, which is an attack, but goes all the way across the board in a straight line. The dwarf cards, I already showed you the attack one, but the dwarves... Here's one, it shows two feet, so that means one or two dwarves can each move one. Here, the guy with the crossbow can do an arranged attack of one. You see lots of shields in here. There's a net, one of the dwarves has a net in which he can capture the dragon, forcing the dragon to use his actions to get rid of that, or else the dragon can't move any longer. And then, you know, the, the different attacks and moves and so on. It's pretty, it's pretty simplistic on how the game is played. Uh, I mentioned that there's one dwarf with a bow and arrow, one dwarf with a net, and then there's another dwarf that has a little token called a fury token. He can use this once per game, and that will give the dwarfs three actions on a turn rather than two. And so the game will progress, like I said, until either one of the teams kills the other team, or until the decks run out, in which case the dragon player wins and has flown away. All right, so that's Draco. Now, it's an asymmetrical game, which means the dwarves are different than the dragon. The player playing the dwarves has to move the dwarves around three different, and trying to get them in position. Usually trying to get close to the dragon. The dragon is trying to fly away and use its breath to kill the dwarves. Let's look and see what Melody thinks of it first and then I'll tell you. I like the game moving the dwarves around. Um, I think it's pretty cool trying to attack the dragon and picking where the spot is, like if you put all the blood tokens in this one particular part, the dragon can't fly. So what part's the most important to take out first? The wings, definitely. Oh, the wings? And then the fire breath, but that's basically it. But um, it was a lot of fun to play. Beating my dad is a lot of fun. All right, all right, we always get I back was, to that. I was close to death, though. It, is, it does seem oh. to be fairly balanced, and I think 
poor play and 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 bad card draws, I guess, yeah. could could change things. Uh, but the the two sides, like I said, do feel different, and it is interesting to see how you take that. The dragon slowly gets weaker over the time, while the dwarves don't necessarily get weaker. Although you can kill them off, which diminishes them greatly. Uh, I found the game decent, good for a lark, but nothing more than that for me. Because it was fun and it was, it was okay, but it, I don't know, maybe it was too light. Something like this, I, I thought, I don't know. It, it almost felt to me like it really came down to card drawing at the end. Not, it's not a terrible game. Great miniatures, uh, lots of fun running back and forth, but I think if I played this two or three more times, then I would probably be done ever playing it. It just didn't seem to have a lot of staying power for me. But it is a light game, and I think that it would interest a lot of people. Did you like it? Yeah, it's also like thumbs in the middle thing for me. Thumbs in the middle. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's an interesting game. I, I'm just, I don't know. It didn't have, it didn't have any pizzazz, maybe. Oh, it's a, I don't know. But you know what? I do know some people will like it. Uh, someone described it to me as a lighter version of Niroshima Hex, which isn't quite true. Uh, it almost has some feel like to the old Star Wars Epic Duels, just with only two different characters. Now, if they made multiple sets of Draco with different uh, characters that you put in there, and then now we have an ogre come in the next time, and then three elves, that might catch my attention. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.